On a day not unlike today, 65 million years ago, an asteroid was barreling towards Earth at 46,000 miles per hour. It blasted a hole through the atmosphere, generating a supersonic shockwave, and struck a shallow sea in what we now know as the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The meteor had forged a crater 18 miles deep and 110 miles in diameter. It was vaporized immediately, along with much of its surrounding environment, forming a fiery plume that sent dust across the globe. The impact ejected 25 trillion metric tons of debris into the atmosphere. And when the debris came falling back down, they too gained heat, which set fires everywhere they fell. Fire consumes 70% of the world's forests. Tsunamis began to rip apart coastlines. When the asteroid struck, it vaporized layers of limestone, releasing into the atmosphere a trillion tons of carbon dioxide, 10 billion tons of methane, and a billion tons of carbon monoxide, as well as 10 trillion tons of sulfur compounds. The sulfur combined with water to create sulfuric acid, which then fell as an acid rain that stripped leaves from any surviving plants and leached nutrients from the soil. The sky was darkened by dust. Photosynthesis became nearly impossible. 75% of all species on the planet went extinct. This extinction event marked the end of the dinosaurs and of the Cretaceous period. But the lucky few who survived laid the foundation for a new age, the Cenozoic. The Paleogene period, the first of three in the Cenozoic, lasted for 43 million years. This was a very important time when animals were free to find different ecological niches after the dinosaurs died. The extinction event reshaped the world's ecosystems, allowing for a vast array of animal and plant development. The Mosasaurs and Plesiosaurs went extinct and left a huge vacancy in the top of the food chain, which allowed sharks to thrive and increase in number. Primitive whales also appeared at this time. Insects appeared and diversified alongside flowering plants, forging the pollinator relationship between flora and fauna. Certain reptiles also survived the extinction event. Birds and crocodiles thrived. Early lizards, snakes, and turtles also started evolving during this time. The small and simple mammalian species began to evolve, grow rapidly, and diversify, and became the real stars of the show, giving Cenozoic its nickname, the Age of Mammal. We are still in the Cenozoic era today, more specifically the Holocene Epoch of the Quaternary Period. Let's take a little stroll down our ancestral memory lane and talk about the strange creatures that inhabited Earth after dinosaurs. The Megatherium was a giant ground sloth native to South America, Central America, and North America as far north as the southern United States. It was one of the largest animals in its habitat, weighing up to 4 tons with a shoulder height of 7 feet and a length of 20 feet from head to tail. This sloth was primarily a quadruped, but its trackways show that it was capable of bipedal locomotion. Like a modern anteater, it walked on the sides of its feet because its claws prevented flat-footed walking. Megatherium possessed the narrowest muzzle of all the ground sloths from the Pleistocene, possibly suggesting it was a very selective eater, able to carefully pick and choose which vegetation to consume. While it fed primarily on terrestrial plants, it could also stand on its hind legs, using its tail for balance to reach for upper growth vegetation. Megatherium became extinct around 12,000 years ago. Most cite the appearance of an expanding population of human hunters as the cause of its extinction. The Glyptodon is a genus of Glyptodont, an extinct group of large herbivorous armadillos which inhabited South America. It was covered by a protective shell composed of more than 1,000 bony plates called osteoderms. Unlike turtles, glyptodonts could not withdraw their heads into their carapace, but instead had a bony cap on top of their skull. It's been suggested that their eyesight was rather bad, having both color blindness and low acuity vision in dim light conditions. They weighed nearly 5,000 pounds and reached lengths of almost 9 feet. The smaller group of glyptodonts were selective feeders, while the larger glyptodonts were bulk feeders. Possible predators of the glyptodon were the Smilodon, the Arctotherium, direwolves, and terror birds. The evidence for glyptodons being hunted by humans is very scarce, limited to a Pliocene skull found in North America and some late Pleistocene to early Holocene specimens found in South America with signs of human consumption. It's also been noted that humans may have used the carapace of dead glyptodons for shelter. Like most of the megafauna in the Americas, they became extinct at the end of the last ice age 10,000 years ago. Indracotherium is a genus of giant hornless rhino, remains of which have been found all across Eurasia. It was one of the largest known terrestrial mammals to ever exist. The exact size is unknown due to the incompleteness of the fossils, but it's estimated to have been 15 feet tall, nearly 30 feet long, with a long neck supporting a 4-foot skull. 
Because of its size, it would have had few predators and a slow rate of reproduction. Though we haven't found any skin impressions and thus cannot be sure of the texture, most reconstructions show it having thick, gray, and hairless skin based on the modern rhinoceros. This would make sense since dense hair retains body heat, which is why animals like the modern rhino and elephant lack it. It's been theorized that contrary to most depictions, Indricotherium had large elephantine ears that it used for thermoregulation, but this idea has been met with skepticism. It's more likely to aid in thermoregulation that these animals cooled down by resting in shade or wallowing in water and mud. The simple, low-crowned teeth indicate that the Indricotherium was a browser with a diet consisting of relatively soft leaves and shrubs. Climate change, low reproduction rate, and food competition was likely the reasons they went extinct 23 million years ago. Georgicetus is a genus of ancient whale known from the Eocene period of the United States. It's hard to know the total length of the animal as no legs or tail vertebrae have been found, but researchers estimated at 10 to 20 feet. It likely swam using its hind legs by wiggling its hips and moving its trunk up and down, a locomotion behavior abandoned by modern whales. The large incisors and canines in the Georgicetus indicate that it was either carnivorous or piscivorous. Current research puts Georgicetus as the link between protocetids and modern whales. Arctotherium is a genus of Pleistocene short-faced bears that inhabited Central and South America. Arctotherium species ranged between a variety of sizes, both between species and individuals of the same species. The sole remaining Tremarctine bear, the speckled bear, exhibits strong sexual dysmorphism, with adult males being 30-50% to 50 larger than females. So it's estimated that the Arctotherium was between 2,000 and 4,000 pounds and 11 and 14 feet tall, making them the largest bear to ever live. The frequency of broken teeth found in most specimens suggests that they were able to prey upon large animals, including horses, camelids, glyptodonts, and giant ground sloths. It's plausible that they also scavenged, and their jaw and cheek indicates that they also consumed vegetation. Three Arctotherium individuals, postulated to have been a mother with adolescent cubs, were discovered in a paleoburrow together, which opens the possibility that they lived in family groups and utilized dens. They went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Talasochnus is an extinct genus of semi-aquatic ground sloths from the Miocene and Pliocene epochs of the Pacific South American coast. They evolved several marine adaptations over the course of 4 million years, such as dense and heavy bones to counteract buoyancy, the internal nostrils migrating farther into the head to help with breathing while completely submerged, the snout becoming wider and more elongated to consume aquatic plants better, and the head angling farther and farther downwards to aid in bottom feeding. They were quite large, reaching lengths of almost 9 feet but not large enough to avoid predation. They were likely fed upon by sharks and early sperm whales. Talasochnus went extinct at the end of the Pliocene, likely due to a cooling trend that followed the closing of the Central American Seaway, which killed off much of the seagrass on the Pacific South American coast. The strangest mammals of them all is the Homo sapien. Anatomically modern Homo sapiens first appeared in Africa in the past 3,000 years, having evolved from their common ancestor, Homo erectus. Homo sapiens sapiens rivaled with Homo sapiens neanderthals, who were biological powerhouses in comparison. So how is it that Homo sapiens came to rule the world? They started to imagine things. They made shelters, spoke language, made clothing, they started to sing, draw, make up stories, domesticate plants and animals, lived in villages, invent, create. And then they just never stopped creating. Music, marriage, cities, war, celebrations, churches, medication, bombs. It was this mechanism of complex intelligence, imagination, and emotion that animated an organism that was somehow more than just animal. Good and bad did not exist in the animal kingdom until Homo sapiens took form. The sheer existence of human beings was the foundation for morality. What they choose to do with this law, which is not of nature but of something beyond, is ultimately up to them. The remainder of the Cenozoic is yet to be seen for these creatures. Who knows what's going to happen? Perhaps it was an asteroid or insurmountable climate change that was fated to end the reign of humans, but it seems now that they will forge their own untimely end. Yet, if they changed fate once, they can do it again. Up until the very last moment, there will be time for Homo sapiens to utilize morality. 
While there's so many unknowns, there is one thing I can assure you. And that is when 65 comes out, I'm gonna fucking shit my pants. And I'm gonna drop a 30 minute long, everything 65 got wrong about dinosaurs because I'm a little shit baby and I want feathers now. Because I'm a hater, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a natural born hater. I see something that irks me mildly and the part of my brain that's supposed to go, uh, just brush it off, malfunctions, and I end up engaging in a Twitter fight for three hours until I get blocked and reported. That's just who I am. Welcome to the fucking Holocene, baby. I'm part of the apex predator species and I'm too scared to tell my waitress when she got my order wrong. Peak evolution, folks. Mm -hmm.